when you began to use the authentic leadership action wheel, that created the framework for discussion where all of a sudden it, it uh, created excitement because now we could identify and draw people into the conversation. So we began to work with our staff and our leaders and we began to start looking first at our history. Where have we been? What has this place been like? So we are digging in the archives. We were learning about the history of this congregation and realizing that many of the things and the ministries that we were still running were from yesteryear and they weren't necessarily working now. And, and we people were feeling that we need to do something different. And so we began to develop little teams uh, through our staff and through our leadership. And we began to uh, look at what are the systems that we need to think about. We did a little audit and we found that we had like hundreds of things that were happening and a lot of people who were burned out and things that we really needed to stop doing. And we needed to sunset them. But people are also afraid of conflict, like they don't want to stop something because they, they're afraid that it's going to be upsetting to somebody. Uh, but we needed to have courage around having these conversations. And so what this action wheel has allowed us to do is to create a culture, a culture of trust and a culture of safety and wondering together. And it has really helped me because I have a framework to provide a roadmap for conversations. I don't have to have all of the answers, but what I can do is uh, with, um, with confidence is I can use this framework to enter into a conversation. Mm -hmm. So for example, it has really allowed us to dig into our resources. You know, mm -hmm. Do we have the right staffing right now? Mm -hmm. Do we need to pivot and think about something different in the future? And we can begin to wonder about these things without it being a threatening conversation. Mm -hmm. So we have to be crystal clear about our purpose and our focus. And here at our church, um, we really focus uh, uh, as setting the culture as a loving, serving community. So when people come here, we are helping people to find community we are helping people find purposeful ways to serve. And the Authentic Leadership Action Wheel provides that framework for us to do that in a deep way. Because what, what it's doing is we're always monitoring uh, how we're doing and why we're doing this. If we, every, every dollar that comes in our offering plate, mm -hmm. because we, we don't subsist mm -hmm. on grants, it's all donations from our members and friends of our congregation. Every dollar that comes into our offering plate is stewardship, and we need to be wise with that money and invest it in the best way, mm -hmm. whether it's in our staff, if it's in an outreach ministry uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with transparency, the action wheel allows us to really dig down into making sure we have the right systems in place. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm reading through this. We are looking at systems thinking we're always monitoring our processes. We're in constant communication. And what it has done is it, it allows us actually to have courageous conversations that are hard, mm. but people aren't, um, they're, they're not uh, passive aggressive or they're not hiding or holding back because mm -hmm. they're fear they're gonna offend somebody. It's actually doing the opposite saying, let's wonder about this together Mm -hmm. And uh, and that allows us to enter into some deep work. And then we come out of it, we may say, well, we've wrestled with this. We're, this is bigger. We need to wrestle with this more and get some different people in the room. But this conversation has helped us reflect deeper that, hey, we need to, we need to plan for the future. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. uh, put our head in the sand. Or mm -hmm. we need to create role buy-in. We need to make sure that we're crystal clear on our job descriptions so that people know what to do and that they will have a predictably good experience rather than for them trying to figure out what, what am I supposed to do? I don't, I don't know what the end goal is. Mm -hmm. So this is providing a good structure. We need to raise money uh, to meet our mission and not only for our program budget, for our staff and for our ministries, we have a mortgage on our building mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a nice campus here. And so we were a little bit in trouble because uh, the previous capital appeal didn't meet its goal mm. and we had a roof that was leaking and we had a number of things to be attended to and there was some anxiety in the system but uh 
what is really neat about this, I'm in a different place here today uh, because of this action wheel. Um, when we begin to tell the why uh, around what we're doing mm -hmm. and people actually can see it, mm -hmm. that trust is just reinforcing. They're like, you know what? I want to know more about this mm -hmm. or what well, I really like what's happening and I want to invest in this. This isn't an expense. This is an investment. So, we, so our capital appeal, when we were raising money, um, our leaders thought that we were only going to do a, a certain amount. Um, and, you know, they thought we maybe will be half a million. Actually, it went almost double, double that. And because our culture has been set, I'm privileged to, to I'm blown away by it, but I'm privileged where our congregation went above and beyond where some people said, besides just contributing to, to this capital appeal, what if we did a mortgage buy down? And a mortgage buy down is above and beyond where people wanted to give money to the mm -hmm. principal of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, well, that's great. And in my mind, I thought, boy, this will be twenty or thirty thousand dollars. And uh, no, it is two hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars, which blew quarter us quarter million. Wow, two hundred sixty-six thousand. Yeah, and yeah. and a lot of that has to do with because we set because we set our culture, but it's because we are tending to um, conversations and, mm -hmm. and frameworks. And mm -hmm. I think reflecting on this, Mo, what has been beneficial is as we have dug into, let's say that we've had a conversation with scanning the future. Mm -hmm. I can take that conversation and I can bring it into another team with creating meaning and changing chaos and build on it mm -hmm. and say, this is what other people have been looking at with scanning the future how do we what do, how do we make sense of this well now we have another team that provides reflection we come out with those summary notes and we began to tell the story more widely then we go back and we reflect again and we just begin to add more and more people into the conversation we also have to realize like when it's too much information we need to brand it down to uh, a summary document, or here's where we are right now, mm -hmm. so that people aren't overwhelmed, but they're like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. Or we show a picture. We show a picture mm -hmm. of where we are in the future. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have, um, I mean, people don't give a quarter of a million dollars or more if they don't trust what's happening. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm like, you know, the the the, the hopeful one is like, if people can give a quarter of a million dollars, can they give a half a million? <laughs> well, and and it, it helps us with our. What can our we do? Power. What can we do if we come together that way? Right. 